standard, uh, standardized surgery and total mesorectal excision, we're going to put that to one side for the rest of this talk because that to me was the 20th century and we're now into the 20th first century and we now have a number of options. What we've, you've heard about all morning this morning was all to do for the most part with, uh, with uh, new techniques in approaches in how to do things via a, uh, say for example, a transanal approach. What I'm going to talk to you a little bit about is, is uh, what we can do with chemoradiotherapy, organ-preserving approaches, using a transanal but endoluminal uh, approach rather than the extraluminal approach you saw earlier. The complications of low anterior section, we know, verge on 100% by the time you've closed the loop ileostomy. Complications of abdominal perineal resection are even, uh, are even higher in some institutions. Organ-preserving approaches for cancer, of course, is not a new concept. In uh, uh, breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, head and neck cancer, cervical cancer have all used radiotherapy and have all used it very well to uh, preserve the organ. So why not rectal cancer? Well, we know from uh, most of the neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy trials that you can expect that as many as 20% or 25% of, of cases will have a complete pathological response. We know from our own data and those of others that, uh, that uh, the TRG1 being a complete response have a virtually 100% survival. They also have a very low local recurrence rate. They also have a very low disease-free survival, or very high disease-free survival. So we know that these patients do very well. And of course, it's probably more due to the fact that they've had an excellent response to chemoradiotherapy than our wonderful surgery. Now, Haber-Gamma uh, is, uh, is synonymous with the concept of uh, organ preservation. The difficulty, of course, with uh, Haber-Gamma's data kind of stemming from, uh, from Brazil is that those of us who are interested in this as a concept and those of us who give plenty of chemoradiotherapy to patients have difficulty with reproducing the type of numbers that they had. In some of the initial data that they had, they had a, and a fairly astonishing observation alone in 71 of those patients that you saw a moment ago. With a mean follow-up of 57 months, there were only two endoluminal recurrences, which is pretty astonishingly good. One went on to have transanal full thickness, the other had salvage brachytherapy. I personally can't re reproduce these results in my institution, and I'm not sure if others have been able to either. But they, th the overall survival and disease-free survival were so good that they were actually better in the observation group than in the, uh, the resected group. If any of you are interested, there's a fantastic article written in the BJS by Rob Dean Jones and Rob Hughes on uh, this particular thing, looking at Habergama's data. And if you look at it, they've published over a number of years on a, on a large number of patients which seem to have a variable number uh, with variable complete responses. So I'm not entirely sure, although the data I'm sure is robust, I'm not entirely sure this is reproducible outside those institutions.